Despite the Middle East's long association with them, camels actually originated in North America 45 million years ago. No, they didn't. Are you serious? Basically, <laughs> Americans are the ones whose dads are camels. So eat <laughs> Christopher D, who yelled at me in the boys' locker room sophomore year in high school. and welcome to 500 Open Tabs. I'm Kava Taharian. And I'm Hannah Hillam. Welcome. Welcome back. back to the show. What's new? Are you feeling better this week? Or are you still I, COVID? I mean, feeling better is a very broad okay. question. You, I don't know if I feel good about okay, anything. Like, are you physically better? Like, I don't care about Again, how you're feeling emotionally. I'm 41. I, I never feel well physically. <laughs> Everything hurts all the time. Can you breathe? Uh, can you smell? Can I breathe? Can you taste? I can breathe and I can smell and I can taste. And That's I am good. no longer in, uh, I, I have not had COVID now for, you know, about a week or so. So in that oh, sense, that's good. I'm feeling better. I also, interestingly, um, because I had COVID and I needed sleep, I wasn't drinking coffee for like a week. Whoa. Are you um, like withdrawing? Like, like withdrawing? That's not the word. Withdrawing. With with withdrawing. Well, well the thing that is, is that if you just sleep through it, it's fine. Like you don't get the Ooh. headache if you could just sleep. So oh I had God. to sleep anyway. <laughs> so now since then I've gone to, because I usually have, this is, okay, this is a bit of a tangent, but I'll just I go really care. quick. Co okay. Well, then I won't say it. I'm sorry. Oh, you what? don't care that it's a tangent? Yeah, please. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, <laughs> you took that right as an attack, which understandable. Uh, just I would have too. Understandable. Re real quick. So like yeah. California coffee is like the the amount of roasters and stuff that are just oh, like yeah. everywhere throughout the state. They make the strongest coffee and you don't realize how insanely strong it is until you leave the state and you have coffee anywhere <laughs> else. And you're like, why do I have a headache after I had a large coffee? And you're like, because in California, it's, it's insane. So Outside yeah, here, so um, water. Basically, I've been trying and it's it's become a problem because if I have to have like normal coffee somewhere, I'm like, I get a headache because it's not strong <laughs> enough. So after I had COVID and I like weaned off of it, I was like, OK, I need to scale this back a little bit and try and get this back under control so that I'm not so reliant on like this insane shit your pants, like not having a headache coffee. So I know I don't sound like I'm less caffeinated right now, but I promise I am. So I've been getting natural sleep and I've been Weird. drinking just a little bit of espresso, like one shot in the mornings, which I have not done for years. Whoa! Uh, so we'll you're see how weenie. long that lasts. Are you gonna see how long you can go? Like, see how long you? I'm can just gonna just... try. Yeah. yeah, not because I'm anti coffee, but just because like it's yeah. it's gotten so strong that it's <laughs> right. it really is a problem if you can't have the super strong coffee. So I'm like, this isn't good. You know, I would love someday. I'm looking forward to the day where I have enough time to not be addicted to caffeine. You know what I mean? Mm. Someday. I don't know. I feel like that's the one thing I have. That's my only vice, really, these days. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the only same. thing I allow myself to engage in. And it's nice and it's like it tastes good and helps you, you know, the bowel movements and it gives me somewhere to go in the mornings and all that. So <laughs> I like how we went right into this talking about poo, which is fine. Shitting. My... Helps you shit. It does. Um, anyway, but I'm feeling better. Thank you so much. Good. I'm excited to be back on top and being able to do a proper tab again this week. Thank you for allowing me to be totally disoriented. I have no idea. We haven't listened to the episode yet. I don't so I have remember no idea what we did terrible last week. I might have sent. We talked about the husk target. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was that last week? Yeah, it feels like 30 years. That feels like feels like ages ago. I don't even remember what yeah. I talked about, but oh, ancient graffiti. That's right. Ancient graffiti. Yeah. Anyway, anyway uh, I believe you're up first this week because I, am, I yeah. went first last week because I had to conserve energy. So yeah. after you. And because of that, you got better. So thank you, Hannah. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, so this week- The cure. The, hi, me. Uh, this week, I went through a bit of a flurry, a frenzy of tabs, which, you know, I chose okay. three different ones at some point and just ended up doing none of them. And uh, so I scrolled Perfect. back a while, back to like January. I know, right? That's always a good sign when I'm scrambling at the last minute. Um, I went back to the like, my January-ish tabs because I remember re opening this article that was like when I was doing the Roar episode. Do you remember that one with the Alliance? I do remember the Roar episode. Yes, very much so. It was great. So I watched a bunch of crap about that on Reels and YouTube. So my algorithm was like, oh, you like crazy animal stories? Here you go. Lion attacks. <laughs> so I have several tabs of just random animal stories. So as you know, Pavi, you live in Southern California, correct? Last I checked, yeah. Oh, I, think. I hope you still do. And as you know, it's famous for its amusement parks. And, you know, Disney, Six Flags. Oh, really? 
Knott's Berry Farm. I don't know if you've ever heard of any of these places or if you're married to someone who loves them or whatever. And uh, other ones I don't know about. <laughs> so um, another LA thing, as you know, is that everybody there is kind of eccentric and they've all kind of come there for a reason that's mm-hmm. off the beaten path. So there's a bunch of yeah. crazy people. Sorry, crazy in the best way. Yeah, first time hearing about this. Yeah, you should don't go outside. I'll tell you that. (laughs) They're everywhere. A bunch of eccentric people who love amusement parks and who go there for weird reasons. So this combo can sometimes create quite an interesting enterprise. And which Mm. is why I'm going to be telling you today about Alligator Joe Campbell and his alligator theme park. I thought he said alligator Joe Camel. And I was like, I they wish. banned Joe Camel. Oh they took him gosh. away from us. I know. He Wait, was an icon. Al- <laughs> alligator Joe Campbell? Yeah, Alligator Joe and his alligator theme park. Okay. So- <laughs> where is oh, You're going to tell me all about oh, I'm, I'm intrigued. Tell you. So unfortunately, this alligator theme park does not exist anymore because it <sighs> was full of um, over a thousand alligators. A thousand? And- <laughs> <laughs> Yes. The neighborhood of Lincoln Heights used to house a thousand Whoa. alligators. This park, right? So if you think back to like 1900s, people were doing insane things constantly. You know, the yes. Olympic marathon, all that right, stuff. Right, right, right. And one of these things was opening a theme park dedicated to alligator tricks and alligator fighting and alligator petting zoos. So I, you... I swear this is a thing that exists in Florida still. It does. But yeah. this one was in the heart of, in the middle of a neighborhood in LA. Lincoln Heights. That's so yeah. strange. I never would have thought that. Well, it used to be kind of like a neighborhood where, like, it wasn't gentrified, alligators obviously. Lived. Yeah. <laughs> all the alligators lived in that neighborhood before all these white people came in and gentrified ruined it. Gentrified it. Yeah. They're like, we used to be able to just eat chickens in the street when we were alligators <laughs> before all these people showed up. We used to be able to eat Was it like a other. swamp? It wasn't like a swamp or anything, was it? I don't. <laughs> I don't no. even I don't know anything about that. How do you have Okay, sorry. I'm like exploding. <laughs> I'm How do you get a you. thousand alligators into Link? <laughs> Look, through God all things okay, are possible. Okay, I need to calm down. Yeah. So and jot that down. <laughs> by, by, so jot that down. And by God, I mean a dude, a, Flo- a Florida man named Alligator Joe. So, we start off <laughs> Please with... tell me that was his birth name. <laughs> no. Unfortunately, this dude's a giant liar, so we had many names, but the name oh, I'm going to call him by is Alligator Joe. So, Alligator Joe. This project, this amusement park, was the project of some guy named Frank Ernest, who was like a businessy type dude who who just loved alligators, and uh, a man named Alligator Joe Campbell, who also loved alligators, but in like an insane way. So, <laughs> Joe, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna try harder to laugh through this because this story is um, Joe Campbell. <laughs> Joe, Joe Camel. <laughs> I'm going to call him Joe from now on. Please uh, help me have an image of, of a, a, an alligator smoking <laughs> cigarettes and like wearing a cool jacket as part of their logo. Like Joe Camel, but Joe Alligator. I know. I want that. Oh, let's try it. Okay. Uh, you should draw it. I'm not going to draw that. I will. Okay. Uh, you're the artist. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so strange thing to say. You're right. Okay. I'm not an artist at all. Yeah. No, I'm not. <laughs> so uh, Joe Alligator Joe was born uh, Warren Frazee. That was his birth name in okay. eight, 1873. And he was born in Florida. Don't really know where because his background is hazy at best. And he had already back in like the early 1900s been yeah. keeping a ton of alligators on some land like in Florida, like hundreds. And he would like... <laughs> He would invite like guests, and he would wrestle them for entertainment. So this, oh, okay. <laughs> this dude was imagine that massive, dinner party, <laughs> but insane. So that this dude was yeah, like a three hundred. <laughs> bring, bring a, bring out like a, bring a white wine spritzer and a... watch me fight alligators. Please. <laughs> I'm gonna wrestle this alligator until it's yeah. submiss, until I've submit, submit, submissive it. What's the word? Submissive it. No, I think that's it. Submissive it. <laughs> I'm not even gonna. Let's we'll just go with that. We're going with that. Uh, so this dude was a 300 pound uh, Floridian with gigantic mustache, of course, because it was 1905. Of course, and yeah, he would also always tell everyone he was Hispanic. He was not, and sometimes he'd pretend to be a Native American, and he was not. So no, okay. After a while, he was like, "Actually, I'm just the son of a British British colonel," which, again, he was not. So he liked to make up. <laughs> a- <laughs> He likes to make. He was up actually a lot. the son of an alligator. <laughs> he was part alligator. That makes so, sense. He's wrestling his own kind. Yeah, evil. 
why do we have to fight? You know, why do, why do alligators have to fight? On top of that, this giant mustachioed man wrestling alligators always kept a pistol and a rifle on his body at all times, mm, just in case okay. he needed to take yeah. measures to uh, keep himself alive. But he never had to because he was apparently a really good alligator wrestler. And these alligator wrestling shows were wildly popular. So he was doing them around I can Florida. Imagine. Right? I'd see that. Today I would. Yeah, I would absolutely watch a guy <laughs> just wrestle an alligator and also right? lie about his race. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I wonder if he was like, I'm Native American and I can wrestle alligators. Like, that's probably yeah. sounded way more like legit. I mean, that's very, like, turn of the century, like, flim flammy, like, snake oily. Like, it's, this dude that was very common. He's a flim flam man through and yeah. through. Uh, so he, at one point, got this gig where he was invited to have an exhibit at this, um, they, called, they called them Wonderland Parks. Like, think Coney Island and, like, um, okay. kind of those yeah, tacky... Yeah, yeah. Uh, but this park was named the Beautiful Orient uh, because, of course, this is 1906. Racially and, sensitive, um, I'm sure, and oh, accurate. Every exhibit, like, uh, for example, the Streets of Cairo. Oh, uh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, 100% accurate. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, another one was called Dark Town. So I'm not even going to go into what that Dar- exhibit was. Did you say was. Dark Town? I did say Dark Town. <laughs> oh, my God. It's bad. <laughs> Don't. It's not even know, subtle for the time. Not at all. And it was just a <laughs> yeah. bunch of. You know, people in blackface. It was bad. It was the pictures made me yeah. feel deeply uncomfortable. You're really uncomfortable, yeah. But yeah, I will not be putting those on the anyway. So these exhibits were all, of course, very racially insensitive. But uh, why people loved him, and uh, he was able to have his exhibit, and he called it the Alligator Jungle section of the park, and he had it for one summer, and he brought 200 alligators, and he did his usual Whoa. thing where he was like, "I'm wrestling these alligators," and he had this assistant. A one-legged assistant named William Salisbury. <laughs> William and Bill Salisbury. Bill, Bill Salisbury and Alligator Joe. And, and Bill Salisbury only had one leg because Listen, he said, are we going to pretend like this is not a thing that would be just uh, obviously this is going to attract great crowds. This oh, is this is good marketing. So much money. He was yeah. rolling in it. Yeah. Uh, so Bill lost his leg and he's like, it was because of an alligator, but we actually can't confirm that. We'll see. Anyway, so after that summer ends, it was wildly successful, but the park started going under because I don't know why. Actually, I didn't. I didn't want to keep looking at pictures of people in blackface, so I just closed. Yeah, the I was going to say probably a lot of it's. I assume it's very unsafe. Like those things probably weren't like well made. No, no, no. Well um, funded. Who knows? So Alligator Joe in 1907 was like, well, where else am I going to go? How about Hollywood? The beautiful L.A. That makes where, sense. Makes yeah, sense. People were kind of flocking there, as you remember, Edison. Yeah, he hates Thomas Edison. That's why he wants to. He's like, I hate Thomas Edison. He's trying to stop me from all my alligator wrestling movies. I'm going west. <laughs> so for pretty much, except for the Thomas Edison part, he was like, I know. I'm going to go rip off a bunch of Californians. And he meets this guy named Frank Ernest, like the guy in the beginning. He's like a very good businessman. Right, right. And he just has always loved earnest. alligators. He is. Yeah. Oh, well. He's earnest too much. Um, and they decided to open up an alligator, pe- pretty much a petting zoo. <laughs> so, Because if there's one thing I want to do, it's pet alligators that love to wrestle. <laughs> well, you know what? Most people wanted to pet alligators. So uh, I, That doesn't sound... I don't want to pet an alligator, to no, be honest. No, I don't want to go near an alligator. Just, not even just like the death part, but like, no. you know, it, it, it doesn't maiming. really strike... Like, yeah. When I think oh, of petting, yeah. I think of like soft. I, like scales don't really seem pet worthy to me you know and no that's and just my personal sensory preference by the way no shame if you want to pet an alligator if you're interested in the skin kava is anti-alligator <laughs> so jot that down jot that uh, down <laughs> they, so they were like okay we can't go too big because we have this land it's like over by lincoln park is that a place in la sure why not yeah i don't know it just reminds me of you said lincoln school. heights right i know yeah. but it's, there was a park anyway i think of lincoln oh, park I see, as yeah, like yeah. You yes, know, Chester songs. Bennington is there singing about alligators. Rest in peace, yeah. Crawling in, in that... my skin. He could just crawling. be like, crawling with the alligators. <laughs> I've become so Mike numb. Shinoda's rapping about it, too. Yeah, yeah he's like, all oh. these alligators wrestling me. I'm trying just to get up and breathe. So please stop trying to kill me. I'm wrestling because I'm from Florida. Uh, I don't know, whatever. That was That's my pretty terrible good. Lincoln Park impression. We're keeping that in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alyssa? Keep it in. Don't don't edit that out. Yeah. Don't cut that. 
I'm gonna New start theme doing song. that. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the podcast starting with that. <laughs> With my incredible <laughs> improv. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. continue. So they move to. So, so Lincoln Park comes out Lincoln and they start Heights. playing shows yeah, for this is there. alligator wrestling. <laughs> he does a live show every time. He's a hundred <laughs> years old. Or no, he's rest yeah. in peace. So uh, of course they uh, needed to let the public know that they were opening this alligator park because obviously alligator parks don't pay for themselves unless people come to pet the alligators, and so. They put advertisements in papers, which I'm sorry, but these advertisements kind of sucked. Like it was like front oh, page news and it said four dozen alligators are coming tomorrow. That sounds more like a threat than an ad. <laughs> yeah, it does. You better watch out, L.A. And four then... dozen alligators are coming tomorrow. <laughs> Everyone screams watch out. and runs. Yeah. <laughs> They're killers. Ah. The, and then in the article, it said the biggest shipment of live alligators ever sent out of Florida. Which is not true, because <laughs> he sent way more to Massachusetts for that uh, racially insensitive oh, okay. theme park. Oh, okay, okay. Anyway, how did uh, he? Did he? Did, it, did he just ship them in a in a I don't boat, know. or does he like put them in a train? What does he do? I I tried to figure that out, and I don't know. You know what I'm picturing in my head was like Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, where in the beginning, where mm-hmm. it's young Indy, where he's it's River Phoenix, and then he finds the train that's like the zoo train, and he's fighting all the dudes on there who took the artifact. You don't remember this? Vaguely remember that. There's like a snake one and there's so basically I'm thinking of like all these box cars with like tons of alligators. (laughs) I wouldn't be surprised if that was what happened because that's well. The Alligator Express. (laughs) (laughs) It crashes and just destroys (laughs) an entire village. Oh, I just picture that thing derailing and just alligators Mm -hmm. just pouring out. (laughs) Trying to save it. Yeah. Yeah. What? Oh, uh, I was going to make a reference that you would understand, which is the fugitive. So you could just see a bunch huh? of the alligators sitting on top yeah. of a bus as it crashed and then just jumping mm-hmm. off and trying to run, but they got chains on their legs and arms. Sorry, I'm derailing big time I today. I don't care. In the literal <laughs> sense, based on the story. Continue. Please. These, these, this train derailment full of alligators was a huge yes. hit to the economy of, I don't know, what are the Carolinas? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we could write a movie. Um, <laughs> you should write a movie. I, I, you're so the he brings person. two dozen alligators. He makes an ad for him in the paper. Yeah, and so they take people this, flock. So like, we're gonna put you in in this setting, okay? Love it. I love yes. doing this. You're a guy, uh, and it's as 19- far as I know. Yeah. Well, as far as we all know, um, yeah. <laughs> such a strange thing to say to that. Okay, part of improv is not commenting on what you just improved, Hannah. All right. Correct. You just take yes note. and. You know, you said you said and you do it unapologetically. But as mm-hmm. I always say, I'm apologetically me, so. I'm really okay. sorry. For what? Nothing. I'm just also apologizing. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I started getting angry. Look, I'm all over the place. <laughs> it might not seem like I'm all over the place, but I am. And No, you're you doing great. Too. Oh, I know. You're doing wonderfully today. <laughs> I usually do. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. I have this talent where I could be absolutely bonkers inside and somehow at the last minute just channel it. Anyway, so I'm channeling it. It's 1910, sir. 1910. And you are an American man living in L.A., just like now. Do you want to pick a name? You could just be Kave. Uh, what was that other guy's name that was oh, really funny? Dick Pudlicott? Um, dick Pudlicott, sure. No, but you're I, Dick. But Your I came through dick. Ellis. I'm just Dick. <laughs> Richard Dick you came through Ellis Island, Smith? so you're Ellis Island, right? So I had to change Pudley Dick Cot. Smith. <laughs> Dick Smith. Dick Smith, and you have a wife and a couple of kids, right? The American Beautiful. family. And, yeah, my uh... kids' names are Adelaide and oh. <laughs> Cap. <laughs> Adelaide and Cap. All right. Yeah. Smith. So you, Mister Dick Smith, you're like, hey, it's Saturday. It's a beautiful, sunny LA day. Uh, we're all wearing long clothes. We shouldn't be inside all day because we're all going to get hot. So we should go out and do something interesting. And you've just read the paper Listen, yeah. and thought, there's a new alligator petting zoo. I know what to do with the kids. And Listen, 20, 1910 <laughs> or 2010, same thing. Same thing. Take them to the alligator park. Uh, 100%. So you put your whatever kid, Adelaide and Cap. <laughs> You just toss them in the back of your, like, whatever it is, Model T. My jalopy, I think is what they called them <laughs> right back then. <laughs> no, you get on one of those bikes with the giant wheel. Yeah, the, the unicycle. Just, no, the no, unicycle, no, the like front the, one. Yeah, the, the old-timey one. You just put your kids on there. I don't know, and your wife. We, you, 
you're what whatever i didn't sure, actually write not? a wife into this i just wrote you and your kids so she's wow. at home. Maybe so she died. so much for feminism hannah yeah she died. Oh, no that's true yeah <laughs> you're, she you're couldn't a handle having kids with the <laughs> dumbest names possible <laughs> perished one night you're a widow why did i let kids. him name the children <laughs> wait is it adelaide or adelaide adelaide <laughs> adelaide and cap <laughs> <laughs> okay you and adelaide and cap are riding your bike car or whatever it is to the alligator park and you're like well mm-hmm. get out and i'm gonna send you a beautiful picture of what it looks like all right oh yes love it i'm pulling you into this story <laughs> Perfect. I'm still laughing about Adelaide and Cap. <laughs> those they're aren't pretty good. Names. They're pretty good turn of the century names. <laughs> they're pretty good turn of the century white dude, white kid names. All yeah. right. There it is. So you pull up and you're oh, whatever nice. you're driving. And it looks kind of like a morgue with a uh, sign that says yeah. allig- alligator farm on it. But, you know, may as well be a morgue. So you get out and you have you get your three quarters out because it's 25 cents a person. And oh. upon entering... You will see one or two of twenty ponds filled with alligators, and they're okay. each organized by smallest to largest, so they go by size. Okay. And at the smallest ones are these teeny tiny little baby alligators, the the length of a pencil. And cute. near them, oh, very cute. Near them is a huge incubator just filled with eggs. So. Whoa. Some of them are hatching. Some of them are just barely put in there. It's like Jurassic Park, yeah. Exactly like Jurassic Park, but like somehow more dangerous. And um, I found this article from 1910 of like a review of the park. And so, of course, I read it. And then mm-hmm. it, um, of course, it goes into detail and at one point mentions how dumb the baby alligators are, but they're <laughs> what? <laughs> so stupid. But they're so. What's st- with the hating on the baby oh, alligators? Just wait. This kid, this person also hates human babies because he goes on to say, uh, the baby alligators are dumb but strong and rarely get sick, unlike, quote, as foolish human babies do, unquote. So, what is, did the, <laughs> so babies just get sick. Sounds like the most divorced man I've ever heard of. <laughs> I know. It's like, uh, kids suck. Yeah, he's weak. like, uh, I'm going to go buy Twitter now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have 15 kids, never talk yeah. to any of them, and then buy Twitter. No. So the first thing you could probably do is go to the like alligator performance show where they start doing tricks. So they've been trained. You're all standing around. You and your two kids are standing here on this big tank, not tank, this big pond. And you're watching Alligator Joe straight up wrestle these alligators. Hell Joe, yes. Right? He's got a pistol. He's got the giant mustache. And you're just like, this is the happiest I've been since my wife died of shame over our kids' names. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> they, they, you start seeing them going down these slides. They called it shooting the shoot because they were like shoots. Okay. Anyway. And these alligators would like stumble up these slides and like they weren't into it. That's the thing. But nobody could. Sure. Right. Right. And they could like flip in circles on their bellies in the water to catch meat in their mouth. Live chickens, doves, pigeons. And uh, once you were done watching that, you know, if you were still into like staying there, you had the option of not only yeah. petting them, but getting inside their enclosures um, and um, Great. <laughs> riding them. So, <gasps> Yeah. So, I mean, like, where's the Nazi king of England? Where's Edward, you know? That's we're surfing, true. We're surfing on reptiles. Where Sur- is he? Yeah, surfing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to send you a photo Surfed of- Surfed on a turtle. These people who are riding them. Um, and whole families could get onto one alligator. And um, this one's a four, f- four adults sitting on oh one God. alligator and riding it. And look how sad the alligator looks. I don't love it. I, um, I'm going to ask you did, you, did you come across in this reading of like, how this happens like I, I don't understand the phenomenon of like just being able to not have an alligator kill you so these like, how, is it just if they've eaten they don't do it or something yes so you gotta feed them and then you also have to like harness them around their mouths because sure if you can put something in their mouths or their teeth they can't actually their teeth <laughs> what they can't actually um like move and try to get you they can't open or close their mouth uh, also they were semi-trained. They were, they were, they've been raised since they were like babies. So they were sure. pretty in the incubator. Yeah. In the incubator. There were some that were from, straight from Florida. Like, like I said in the beginning, but they, they were slightly like you could, you could get them when they were docile. That does not mean that nobody got bitten because they did. <laughs> right. Right. I was going to say they're still <laughs> animals. Yeah, I'm sure. They got bitten. So you can ride them and you pop your two kids on those and you're thinking, man, life's good. 
But well, though, here's the thing. If you're uncomfortable with putting your kids on an alligator, uh, which insane, why would you be uncomfortable with that? Because you're a bitch. That's you're why. You're a huge uh, why? <laughs> wimp. So you have the option of um, putting your kids in the baby alligator exhibit. So you can just plop your toddler in there and it can play with baby alligators. There's a picture of a toddler with a bunch of Whoa. alligators. They're not small. No. <laughs> These are like that thing is bigger than the yeah. I was thinking of like tiny, tiny like newborns. These are like bigger than the toddler. Yeah. So and there's like on. twelve of them. <laughs> uh, there was one of her. This little kid holding um a bunch of um. Here we go. So so really, I guess at at that size, even they're not really that aggressive yet. No. Well, here they are as babies, Whoa. super babies, and um. Yeah. So they I can see the picture though. Yeah. Different sizes. And so depending on the size of the kid or your comfort level, you can like let them play with tiny alligators or you can let them play with, you know, big ones. Uh, but you look, here's the thing. If you're lucky, you can see mm -hmm. Alligator Joe or one of his assistants hypnotizing it, hi hypnotizing an alligator. Oh. Yeah. So they had this weird like, I want to say trick, but it actually worked where they would like hum like almost like throat um, hum like um yeah, like throat singing like the tibetan style yeah like drone like a drone like exactly and they would like yeah. calm these alligators down until they were just laying there like not moving that's super cool yeah so you could see that if you're right there at the right time of day you can even help feed them so let's say you're nice. there at the right time of day they hand you a dead a newly dead uh pigeon and you know cap how old is cap six six <laughs> Sure. Cap picks yeah. up the pigeon and throws it at an alligator and it catches it. Dope. So cool. And then Adelaide, is that her name? She's three name, and yeah. she's I just writing. Sure. Oh, Adelaide's a man? I Our think Adelaide's a man. Listen, uh, my wife and I were progressives for the time. So we were like, <laughs> it's a gender neutral name. Clearly. Now. I assumed that it, I think it was a, usually a boy's name. But for the sake, purposes Adelaide. of the story, let's make it. Okay. So while Adelaide is just writing a tiny, tiny. or like, Maybe I'm wrong. I don't fingers. know. Maybe it was a girl's name. I don't know. Yeah. Putting his fingers in a little in the alligator mouths. Your other kid is like throwing meat in the alligator's mouth, which is pretty cool. But be careful because you can't throw rocks because there's a nice sign that says visitors are requested not to throw stones at the alligators, spit on, punch or molest them in any way, which means that makes sense. All of that happened at one point, which is why they put the sign yeah. up. So, I mean, if you're encouraging people to run around and play with alligators, right. of course someone's going to throw a rock at an alligator to get its attention. I mean, that makes. <laughs> I'm I'm not even trying to joke. I'm no, like, a hundred percent. That's what people would do. I went to the uh, idiot here. <laughs> you know, like you're just you look at me. I I uh, went to the Exploratorium the other day. Have you been there? Yeah. Uh, up in San Francisco. Not and since not for like a billion years, but oh, it's there's a whole exhibit where you, you get to like watch. Anyway, you can watch a cool a bunch of cool stuff happening. And one of them is a bunch of fish, these giant goldfish. And there's a huge sign that says, don't tap on the glass. And immediately my daughter was like punching the glass. First thing. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay, kids are dumb. Uh, and so are adults. So another highlight of the park was someone named Billy the alligator. And this alligator was gigantic and huge and terrifying. And the article called him ugly and gnarled. So I don't know what mean. he looked like, but... Is it the Billy. same writer who like hates kids? Yes, <laughs> this guy hates everything. This guy's a dick. What is his yeah. name? <laughs> oh, I don't Let's know. Let's put him on blast. Should we find out? Loser, divorced idiot is what this guy's name is. <laughs> Do you want he me hates to find alligators out? and I'll babies? Find out. No, it's okay. Okay, fine. I just thought if fine. you had it handy, we could. I don't shame him, but continue. So Bill, Bill Gator, Billy the Gator, uh, and then Billy has some friends. Okay, so here's the thing about Billy the Alligator. He was famous because yeah. he was in. If you watched any movies between the 20s and 40s and mm. there was an alligator in it that was billy so billy nice yeah billy was a, a movie star just like uh all those lions and just like the lions or the dog from fraser <laughs> i'm so glad i've never seen fraser can i just say that <laughs> usually i'm ashamed of it but this time i'm like no even the name fraser makes me annoyed anyway i'm gonna get hate for that uh so these alligators were all like a hundred years old so a lot of oh, them. Oh no way! Yeah, I don't so, think I realized they live that long. <laughs> they live a while. So some of them Whoa. were like a hundred. Some of them were like fifty or sixty. And wait, uh, so are there theoretically alligators that could be around from that time that are still alive now? Yes. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Absolutely. I actually went to try to find out, and I couldn't. So if I had more time, I could it's probably William track the down. Third. <laughs> William Gator the Fourth. Sorry. William, <laughs> Billy the Billy the Gator the Billy Gator the Fourth. Yeah. The fourth, yeah. I bet if we did some research, we could track down 
some of these because because when it did close they were if like you're an okay, alligator and you're listening please submit your dna to 23 please. and we can find your ancestors send us on your family tree com. on yeah. alligator no nope. uh gator try to test. make fun gator test a no fun pun dn gator dn the a and a dna stands for alligator there it is oh some of the other popular gators there were named el diablo and el diablo barataria ben and of course, Barataria Ben. That's an yeah. interesting name. You don't know what it means. And of course, the I. oldest gator and the patriarch of the entire park was Louisiana Joe, named after Joe, <laughs> Gator Joe, or Alligator Joe himself. So, not very good at naming things. Louisiana Joe, that's not really very... bad. Ben, Billy, they're fine. Okay, so okay. the day has been going great. Your kids got to touch a bunch of alligators and you got to feel alive for the first time since your wife died. Right. But you don't want to go home empty handed. No. You have a you have an alligator shaped hole in your heart now. Hole in my heart, yeah, you yeah, need yeah. To yeah. Fill it, and you're in such luck because, dude, the gift shop, you can buy an alligator baby, and you can oh, take, it, take home. it home. Take it perfect. home. Perfect. You can buy as many as you want. You can have them shipped to you. You can buy an adult alligator oh. if you want, because it turns out <laughs> this whole operation was about making money on selling alligators. He'd get so, you in the door yep. with, with the alligator wrestling and all that, but that's actually just marketing. Yeah. This whole thing was Smart. him because here's the thing: at the time, people loved alligator skin, everything, and uh, True. it was newly outlawed to hunt alligators for that kind of thing. So this was his way of being like, buy your own alligators or uh, He's circumventing it, huh? Yeah, and so it was just just huge racket for uh, selling alligator skin. Purses and cigar cases, and which they also they sold in the gift shop. The gift shop you could take home alligator uh, leather shoes and bags and hats and <laughs> wallets and everything. Made fresh on site, <laughs> dude. I don't even know. I tried to figure that That's out. It's messed too. up. It's super messed up. So, but you go classic through, like, for the time. Oh, so 1907 right here, just yep. like pure 1907. So for a dollar twenty five, you can buy your kids each an alligator, which is thirty three dollars today. Which is not bad. That's a steal. That's not. That's a cheaper than a movie. Alligator? Yeah. 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 Oh, is it really? Uh, that's wild. I mean, if you have three people to go see a movie, oh, it's usually about at least fifteen dollars a head. That's yeah. forty five bucks right there. If you want a bigger alligator, uh, it'll be twenty dollars, mm-hmm. which is about six hundred dollars in today's money. And usually, people who ran like circuses would come and buy those. That's a bit if much. You don't want yeah, six hundred is a little one. bit out of my budget. Yeah. Yeah, I can't afford a, a large alligator. I'll buy a baby one. So if you don't want a live one, you could, of course, buy a bag made of one or trinkets or shoes or um, some of these trinkets even have holes Recycled in them. Recycled alligator. Exactly. Right. You can buy skeletons, skulls. You can buy pieces Listen, of the alligator. Let's, let's not pretend like you and I would not have purchased alligator skeletons. I would buy would an alligator skeleton right now. Yes. Should I? <laughs> <laughs> New business. That was very Dennis of you right now. You just went <laughs> like in the making a murderer episode where they're like oh, yeah. talking to him and then they leave and the room and he just goes silent. <laughs> it's a lot and of you're like, hi, I'm references. back on the podcast. Should I? Yeah, I just dissociated murderously. <laughs> uh, if you did, Anyway, so some of them even have holes in them from when the alligators would fight each other and they just preserved those holes in like the wallet you buy. And the guy, a, in the, the, a little bit, the, the guy in the article, the douchebag was like, uh, was like alligators are cannibals. <laughs> you could take these disgusting cannibals, and then you can see the hole where they bit each other and ate each other and stuff like that. It just made it insane. You could even buy eggs that didn't hatch, and they like decorate them. So Easter egg horror story. Of course, all good things must come to an end. In 1915, Joe, alligator Joe, perishes. Mm-hmm. I don't know why is it perish? Like I'm an old timey person. Did he get alligator killed by Joe, an alligator? No, he died of diabetes. <laughs> That's so lame. He didn't even die in the line of duty. No, he didn't. Uh, <sighs> he died of double pneumonia complicated by tonsillitis, heart disease, and diabetes. So this dude was- oh, that's brutal. <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> like, yeah. No wonder. That is just that's a doozy, as the yeah. kids would say. Uh, the kids would say in 1998. Uh, but the park mm-hmm. continued until 1986. So this park okay. closed in- Sorry, 1984. And by the time it closed down, it had moved locations to be right next to Knott's Berry Farm. So you could go to Knott's Berry Farm and then immediately exit and go pet an alligator. Whoa. And it barely had any visitors because by that point, everyone was like, this is messed up. Like, yeah. I don't want to watch them 
be forced down a slide or to wrestle a man with a pistol. And also labor laws and child safety had evolved because everyone's like, I'm absolutely not taking my kid to an alligator farm. Just barely by the early 80s. Just barely. I mean, they were still like, hey, kids, come home when the sun goes down. But they weren't. You yeah, know. we were just talking about this. Honestly, most of the stuff that we think of today really only happened in the past, uh-huh. like 15 years, maybe. It blew my mind. <laughs> 20 that, years. Like, I could get arrested. Not arrest, but I could get fined if my kid is outside alone. That's in- I didn't know that. That's you insane. You didn't know that? You can get oh, yeah. fined? If my kid walks to school alone, I could be get fined. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's anyway, not a good idea, but no. I just like the idea that, that you will get fined. But like I would just I would walk me. home from school and just take the longest meandering path and my mom would be like, oh, hey. Like if that happened now, I'd be like, she's Why been, are you she's, home now? She's dead. Yeah. <laughs> like I would, I'd be like calling the police anyway. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So the park closes in 84. 84. And then. Around that time, we all got really interested in the crocodile hunter. And so it was kind of this this move from like exploitation to pres- preservation because we also realized that yeah. the alligators were like endangered. I guess because I guess Florida used to just be absolutely infested with alligators. Or uh, Florida used to be a giant swamp where alligators lived and then people moved into there. You're right. That is actually That's more likely what it is. Didn't they fill in all the swamps at one point like to make cities? I don't know. I'm pretty Probably. sure the, the Everglades no were no massive, and then they just filled them in to like make Miami Making Disney World. Oh, uh, so of course this didn't happen without a many incidents of injuries and stuff. And yeah, um, trainers would get injured, kids' hands would get bitten, uh, people's legs would get bitten. Of course, obviously, why course. wouldn't they? And one of the incidents is the owner's son, actually, Ernest uh, Frank Ernest Jr. He was like nine mm-hmm. and he was watching his dad feed the alligators and oh, no. one of them, yeah, he's okay. He lived. One of them rose up thinking Frank Jr. had food in his hand and just <sighs> latched onto his hand and trigger warning for violence. But her, his dad immediately just gouged the crocodile, the alligator's eyes out. Whoa. And, uh, yeah. Gouged his eyes, which made him let go. So I guess if you want an alligator to let go of your arm, you go for the eyes, which makes sense. And so mm-hmm. he like gouged the eyes and uh, it let the kid go. But he had like lifelong issues with the arm. That sucks. Um, but it didn't stop him from then going on to like work on the farm, on the alligator farm and, <laughs> and, and, and inherit it. So didn't didn't stop that. And then didn't um, deter him. Yeah. Again, Ernest Sr. fell out of a tree and into one of the ponds <laughs> and knocked his head and went unconscious. And everyone had to drag him out before the alligators started eating him. Uh, so Ernest is not great at this. Um, and then there were just many, many, many other incidences that they never reported because they didn't want to get shut down. The, it stayed in the Ernest family until the 80s and when it shut down. And uh, now it is just in uh, a little empty like plot of grass and a doctor's office. I went and looked it on the map. The, one, but the, the location by Knott's Berry Farm. The location, uh, the original location. The original uh, I, one in Lincoln Heights. I think the one by Knott's Berry Farm is actually now more Knott's Berry Farm. So, oh, I see. But uh, you can go to the. You said it was a dentist's office. I think it's a doctor's office now. It's um, a doctor's office. Okay. Yeah. So it's now. It's just like I a would little... definitely go to that doctor. I think that would be really cool. To yeah. Be like I'm he's... on the old alligator burial grounds. Right? This is where I go to get my. I you would know, market myself as Z Pack <laughs> prescriptions. <laughs> <laughs> but. Anyway, that's the alligator park of Los Angeles, and uh, wow, I had no idea. Isn't that wild? Oh, and it's, it's also really just crazy. Surrounded by houses, it's like highly residential area. So you could just walk outside and be like, "Oh, the alligator park's busy today," and then walk back just in your be house. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. um, when I was, uh, I went to Disney World one time when I was little. I was like five is when my family took us there cute um it's like one of the only proper family vacations i remember taking before my parents got divorced but that's a whole side story but i remember one of the things we went to see we'll we'll work through your parents divorce (laughs) yeah i'll i'll have a whole therapy session yeah uh but i don't remember where it was but i do remember we went to an alligator farm something or other when i was little and i remember very clearly like it was like the chicken that they held in the yeah. middle of like the, it was like a bunch of wall, like it was like a pit that we were all looking into, and then the thing like the alligator jumping and eating the what? chicken live. And I remember seeing that and being like, "Holy shit!" No, it was it was like a it was like a raw chicken. It wasn't that's alive. crazy. You got to, but see I remember that? seeing that. I was like, I was five. I was like, I was like, what? It was like burned into my memory for sure. So I definitely 
as you're telling the story, I'm like, I remember that. I remember being that age. I remember seeing some of that stuff and it was crazy. And did you like it or were um, you like, what What am I doing here? I mean, I don't think I had any sense of like morality of being like, this is yeah. cool to animals. I just was like, what the shit? That thing just <laughs> jumped. That's terrifying. And <laughs> it just ate a like... whole chicken raw. It didn't even get cooked. <laughs> I guess when kid, kids are just like, they just have experiences, like a big train of experiences that they just react yeah. to as they ha- as it happens there's no like context suddenly you're in the car and the next minute you're like watching an alligator eat a chicken and you're I just i want to say that the entry i don't know if i made this up or if this is actually the memory but i feel like the entryway was like a giant alligator head cool. that had been like painted to look weird this is florida in like god this must have been if i was like around five or six, this must have been like 88 1987 88 something this, i was little that's I was cute. very very young but I remember seeing that very well. And like that image is still in my brain today of like that thing just jumping and snatching the the chicken and coming down and just being like, that is insane. That yep. thing is huge. Because you also Whoa. don't think of an alligator as something that can jump. Right. Because it's so like weird and low. It's like a snake almost, you know, the way that jump. you think of the body. Yeah. They can terrifying. jump high. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Look, I don't want to live in Florida. No offense. Um, I'm neutral on Florida. I don't really have any. I don't know enough about Florida to to say I don't want to live there or not. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying in general, I'm saying my stance on it is I I, I have no idea, honestly. I just don't know enough about Florida to take a stance one way or another. I see. That's a cool story. Thanks for sharing your own uh, personal. No, thank you for. uh, (laughs) No, thank you for sharing that. That was really interesting. I will definitely look this up now. Uh, I'm very curious about this. There's some wild Um, pictures. If you have any pictures of you at the alligator farm, find those. Just kidding. Do it. Oh, that's a good want. idea. Yeah. I'll ask yeah. my mom and see if there's any in like an album somewhere. That would be really funny actually to find them. Oh, your mom um, has albums? My mom's always like, I don't want to go dig around because they're all in boxes. Well, she... No, I think she, I mean, she has them somewhere. I don't think she like busts yeah. them out every day, but she might have something somewhere. I'll ask her. Anyway, thank you. That was, that was yeah. really cool. Uh, I really enjoyed that. What do you um, have for me? Funny enough, you were talking about your tab and I'll explain how it relates to mine. Oh, dope. Another weird. Like crossover, the weird kind of synchronicity. Thing? Yeah, yes. I mean not super, but kind of like what we were talking about at the beginning. You'll understand what I'm saying. So, okay, a little bit of context. I'm doing something a little bit different than what I would have normally done. Okay, um, for a tab. So there's this is half personal story, half tab. Oh, dope! I love this. Um, so uh, last weekend, or I guess like at this point now, like a week and a half ago, uh, they were showing um, Lawrence of Arabia in 70 millimeter at the Egyptian in Hollywood. Oh, cool. And I, I'm oh, that's why I thought you were never... dead. Yeah, that's right. Because you texted me and I like didn't respond because I was in, it's like a three hour and change movie with yeah. an intermission. And I was like, you're like, are you dead? Are you dead? And I'm like, no, dude, I'm in the movies. Leave me alone. It's just, he's, um, that, that's how reliable he is with like, it's when true. it comes to People work get... <laughs> stuff. I ask a question about the podcast and if he doesn't answer within two hours, I'm like, he's dead. He's been murdered. <laughs> <laughs> he got in a car accident. <laughs> Anyway. No, thankfully I was just watching the movie, but I I, I'm assuming you've it. never seen the movie. Of course yeah, that's a not. big one to watch. Okay. Uh, but Sarah had also never seen it and I had been talking about it with cool. her for a long time where, you know, I was like, it's one of my all time favorites. I'd love you to see it. So we had waited until there was an actual 70 millimeter screening of it to go see because it's a very different experience. Um, and of course I've seen it like whatever, a thousand times, but it was really exciting. Really? To, I was excited to go with her and to take her. And it was after we had sort of gotten over our sickness and it was really fun. Oh, nice. And, um, one of the really fun things that you get to do when you see a movie with someone is you see it through their eyes when you're watching yes. it for the first time. Oh, yeah. Not the kind where they're as... like rolling their eyes. Yeah. You, well, it's like you're, you're watching it as them. You know, like what would this be You're like watching it as, as them the and, first... and then you're noticing things that yeah. you would not have noticed otherwise, but they notice because they have a different perspective. Yeah. I love doing um, that. And <laughs> so Sarah had this this interpretation of it which was really funny to me and she was like oh this is a movie about two really stubborn bffs who are like super into being fashionable and like camping out in the desert and i was like dying i was laughing so hard i was like that's the most ridiculous take i've ever heard of from lawrence of arabia because it's this huge epic where all this stuff happens but to her it was just like it was the bird cage but like in the desert like that's all it was <laughs> It's a delightful Saturday. We're watching the movie. We're having fun. And I was laughing because, of course, it's in the desert and there's all these camels in the movie. Right. And yeah. these, there's camels everywhere. They're riding camels. He's like getting on camel. There's like camel rays whatever. And I sort of am like laughing because like, you know, camels are kind of fun and cute and they got like long eyelashes. And then yeah. they're funny. And I and in the middle of watching this movie, 
I came to this really strange uh, realization that I had never thought about until then, until I was okay. watching the movie. And um, this might come as a shock to some people, uh, but prejudice exists no, and there is racism. No. <laughs> <laughs> I hate we to break it to you. We solved that. Me and my people I know. solved that. Can, can you believe it? <laughs> I don't know how I can handle that. It was anyway. Anyway, so yeah. Even more shocking. Even more shocking. I no. personally have been a victim of of racism and prejudice what? and horrible things. I'm yeah. I'm not surprised. It's very, yeah. Um. Don't worry. This is not that kind of tab. I'm not going to sit here and, and complain about all that. But I the, would be fine. The point with is. It. I know. I don't really want to get. I don't want to turn this into a whole therapy session. Fine. But I, what I realized was, and, and I'm, you know, I, I'm, I was pretty tough. You know, I, I was yeah. toughened up by like my parents in terms of stuff that I had to, to deal like with. withstand and hear and deal with and all this. And right. I heard a lot of insults and slurs growing up, and I sort of like never batted eye a lot of it, and like didn't tried not to give any credence to it. But yeah, suddenly, as I'm watching all these camels in the movie, I, I remembered like. The so many like the the litany of insults and slurs and like terrible shit that people said to me growing up about like, oh. Oh, like are you a camel jockey? Like, is your dad a camel? <laughs> Do you have sex with camels? Like, did you come to school on a camel? Like, shit like that. You would just hear for years, all the way through high school. <laughs> Kids are horrible. Kids are so bad. <laughs> that sucks, dude. <laughs> it's okay. Again, the point of the, the point of this is not to be like feel bad for me. I'm just saying that like. I heard this so much that I didn't realize until I was watching the movie that I was like, oh, you know what? I guess that was one that I weirdly internalized. And oh. so for a long time, I just like anytime I would think of it, which is dumb for a lot of reasons, obviously, because like racism is dumb, et cetera. But also like camels are not like really a part of like Iranian <laughs> culture in the same way. Like, so I don't, it was just dumb. I was just a kid, you know, I'm just like, right. so for whatever reason that like crossed a wire in my brain and I was like, I need to not like look at camels or engage with anything about camels or under, like it was just this thing that I like shut off in my brain. You just denied and camels so completely. I just denied As camels. Yeah, I just <laughs> denied it. <laughs> And so, like, I'm watching this movie and I'm like, these things are really cool. Like, these yeah. things are straight. And then so all of a sudden I got really angry, as you know. And yeah. I'm like, why have I let people stop me from learning about camels? They can all eat <laughs> shit. <laughs> yes. Take camels back. Yes. So I got really mad. And then as I was like uh -huh. leaving the theater, I was like, I'm going to go home and read about camels. <laughs> and I don't give a shit what it's about. But I'm doing this to defeat racism and to stand up for myself like a, as a 10 year old. And you're doing you know, it for I, little Kave. Who got, who I'm got doing it for little Kave. And I should have been able to do this in the fourth grade, but I couldn't. So eat shit, everybody. And <laughs> if you will indulge me, this is a tab about healing, uh, healing this yeah. ability to learn about camels and to have it not be weird. I great. And <laughs> thank you. And it's not I'm here. This is for not it. a normal tab where I'm like, I don't really have like a proper structure of like what this is gonna be, but I just we're thought we're just talking I would go about camels, it. dude. We're just talking about camels. That's it. This is something I should have been able to do, but I wasn't. But thanks to being able to see Lawrence of Arabia with my lovely wife, I was like, this needs to get healed. Yeah. So I'm gonna do it. Let's do it. So tell me about here we camels. Go. <laughs> I'm so here for this. I'm on yeah. it. Like right now, I'm ride or die. If you said we're gonna oh. go steal a camel, I'd do it. So there. I brought my <laughs> beautiful. I'm putting he's on tying, my bandana. He's tying a bandana, an olive green bandana around his neck. I'm, I'm wearing like my deserty uh, yeah, camping you... clothes, so I'm trying to look like nice. I'm like oh. Like when, I, when there's sand everywhere you gotta, and I go, you oh, gotta, so I look like I'm going to rob a bank, but. <laughs> you can do both. That, you can there do are both. no yeah. limits to this. To what you can do with camels. Yeah. So okay. first off, first of all, oh, let's clear yeah. something up. Despite the Middle East's long association with them, camels actually originated in North America 45 million years ago. No, they didn't. Are you serious? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. They did. So they were here for a minute, and it wasn't until around three to five million years ago that they crossed into Eurasia and eventually migrated south. Weird. So basically, 
basically <laughs> Americans are the ones whose dads are camels and the animal with whom they have carnal relations and right to school with. <laughs> so eat shit, Christopher D, who yelled at me in the boys' locker room sophomore year in high school. You're the camel jockey, except not, of course, because white people aren't from here, but that's a whole other story. That's a whole thing. I feel but like, vindicated right now from when I learned that fact. This is this is turning cam- this is turning racism on its head. <laughs> this is this is flipping the fl- what did they say? Flipping, flipping the, the script. The, thank you. <laughs> I'm feeling I'm feeling this, dude. I'm I'm here for I'm here for this. Like I'm here. Just the rate imagine. Just like they're not even from the Middle East. No, of course. Of course they're not. not of they, course they're, they're not. Anyway, so there's that. Amazing. You got that first of all. Also super weird. That's just bizarre. Very strange. Like yeah. whales or cats? What were they? Camels whales or North, or North cats? American? Campbells are North American. Yeah. <laughs> What's next? Alligators? Um, yeah, right. They were actually all alligators before him. No, okay. Um, camels can drink up to 40 gallons of water in one also, go. screw Chris. Anyone named Chris. <laughs> you know what? I hope Chris is having a, a mediocre life. He probably is. Anyway, they can drink up to how much? Um, I'm still mad 40 at gallons. For, what? 40 <laughs> gallons in one go. That's too much water. <laughs> what? They okay. can apparently go without water for up to two months. Speaking of um, Always uh, Sunny, that episode where Charlie finds that sword at the dump, and he's like, I could cut a camel hump right into oh, it and get right, all the yeah. milk out of it. Where he's sliding down the trail. Right <laughs> <Yeah. down. laughs> Look, I could just cut a camel right in half and get all the milk yeah. out of it. Yeah. I remember. I know exactly the part you're talking about. I love that episode. Um, apparently, one reason they can do can like hold on to water for so long is because of the unique shape of their red blood cells, which Ooh. are oval-shaped. I do not understand this, uh-uh. but according to camel facts, that's what it is. Uh, when a camel does come across water, it can fill up in a hurry, drinking as much as 26 gallons in 10 minutes. Oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> right? We'll just I'm, let that one My sit. mind is a little bit blown right now. It's a lot um, of water. That's unimaginable <laughs> amount of water to and drink. And they'll just store it for a shitload of time what is it if we drink 10 gallons we'll die i'm pretty sure i think, I think so I, yeah I something like that, that. we can die of water overdose we can i remember there was somebody who died a few years ago was part of like oh. a radio contest where they're like how much the water p- can you drink and this woman drank like too much water and died oh rest um, in peace anyway uh you'll like this fact okay uh, out of a six or seven hour night camels only sleep 1.7 hours on average <laughs> With a combination of REM and non-REM sleep, while the rest of the time is spent drowsing, ruminating, or being awake, and they move between these various states, likely to stay vigilant, and they can sleep standing up or lying down. A uh, question. Um, am I yeah. am I a camel? A camel, yeah. Because Except I haven't is... seen you drink that much water, unfortunately, no. even though you should be. I always forget. But, but I do Sheriff... ruminate <laughs> and slip in, bet- in and out of the consciousness while uh, being oh, yeah. vigilant. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I love camels. <laughs> Yeah. I would be proud. S- I would be proud to ride a camel. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Me too. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, I get. I got riled. I'm. I'm in a. Uh, that was. I was. I meant to do that. I'm glad that you're on it board. Worked. We're it taking worked. We're taking it back. And uh, you know, of course, they produce milk that's all higher high in like iron and vitamin C, which is awesome. So, basically, in short, God was like, "Bro, what if we took a horse and made it like immune to heat and like it didn't Way need better. to eat for a week?" And bonus, you can milk it so it's also a cow and beautiful eyelashes. Like beautiful. what? <laughs> like 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 fake oh, those fake eyelashes you see on celebrities, but real and beautiful. Yeah. So basically God was like, eat shit. Camels are the best. Your argument's invalid. Horses? No, um, no, no. No. Horses, Chris? I mean... Horses are for Chris's. <laughs> Camels are for real people. Now, I found an interesting story that I wanted to share as well. Okay. And this might be something I do as a real tab later. I don't know. I'm almost hey. like reticent to bring it up because it's really cool. It's and your I'm, show. Again, you can do I just whatever sort of, you want. I was just sort of like freewheel. I was just uh, spitballing and just doing whatever. Like I said, I just was like, I'm just going to consume every weird little fact or thing that I think is interesting and just talk about it. And I don't care. So um, for this one. We have to go for this story. We go back to our golf course shark and diarrhea sperm whale friends of Australia. Yes. <laughs> the, Great. 
The Stewart Highway is an 1,800 mile long road stretching from Port Augusta in the south to Darwin in the north, crossing what is largely open wilderness, locally referred to as the track. Oh. And there you'll see whatever, like insects and kangaroos or whatever, but perhaps most shockingly to us, what Mel you wouldn't Gibson. think of are Mel Gibson's Mel Gibson, too. that's right. Mel Gibson's yeah. there wearing his kilt, trying to fight the uh, King of England, doing a bad job. Pretending to be American. Um, but aside from from Mel Gibson, you'll also see camels. Well, really? Did you know this? No. Yeah. In Australia? I didn't know this. In Australia. Well, I'm yeah. I'm, I can So according to Feral Scan, which monitors invasive species, about like a decade or so ago, the camel population in Australia had grown to around 1.2 million. <laughs> in Australia? How, yeah. Okay, how come I, how come, how come, you know? Why? <laughs> Have they always been there? Why are they there? No. I'm going to tell oh. you exactly why. Are they an invasive species? Oh, my gosh. So I not again, I've said this before. The last, I, Again, I keep bringing up Australia. It keeps coming up. I don't know much about it, but it keeps coming up through our always love of animals does. and our mutual interest of it. So I was like, how the shit did this happen? So um, when you start to think about the Australian landscape, it kind of makes sense. The yeah. outback. Is just like massive, 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 and it's scorching hot, and there's not, you know, a whole lot of, you know, gas stations in between, usually where you can buy a drink of water. So uh, that's a joke. Right. Um, when parts I of know. coastal Australia were being settled by the British, your favorite. <laughs> Look. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I have to say about it. Look, who among us hasn't been settled by the British? Uh, that's true. So <clears throat> in the late 1700s, the English come in and they're starting to settle and they're like, you know, got their colonial caps on and they're thinking of how we can colonize, etc. Doing what they do best, stealing. Doing what they do best. And they're like, dude, this is like a weird, crazy, giant desert. Like what? You know what's really cool and helpful in deserts are camels. And we can't colonize shit if we don't have a bunch of horses that get heat stroke or whatever. So we need to bring camels here so they can properly colonize and take over everything. The British. The British did this? The British did this. So between 1870 and 1920, as many as 20,000 camels were imported into Australia <laughs> from the Arabian Peninsula, India, and Afghanistan, together with at least 2,000 handlers or cameleers, as they're called, from cameleers. similar regions. Yeah. What next time Chris um, says something about camel jockeys, they actually they're called cameleers. So you can cameleers, bitch. <laughs> and they're referred to now as the Afghan cameleers in Australia, although it uh -huh. seems like most of them are actually from what we now know to be Pakistan. They're from Pakistan, okay. they're like Western India. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, like the Western area of what used to be in of, of what used to be India, which became Pakistan it's now at some Pakistan, point. Yeah. So, they're not, I don't think that they are ethnically Afghans that were or Afghani people, but that's just sort of what they said. Yeah, um, interesting. The animals, the camels that they brought were dromedaries, which are the uh, single yeah. humped versions that are a little bit lighter and quicker. Huh. And uh, as I said, they're ideally suited for the climate of the Australian outback. They could go weeks without water. They had stamina and strength to carry loads and riders across what were lightly exposed, fiercely hot landscapes. It, it's wild, right? <laughs> Ah, of all the things the British, <laughs> of all the things the British have done, I just wouldn't have expected them to have imported a hundred thousand camels to a new country. But hey, it's 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 wild. You do and, anything um, through God, all is possible. Through oh God, so jot that down. So jot that down. Second, wow. So go. speaking of God, they also played a major role in establishing oh? Islam in Australia. In Australia, wait, really? Yep. That makes sense. Yeah, duh. Yep. Because oh, cool. they imported all these camel ears and stuff. And they were just like, hey, we're a bunch of Muslim dudes who are here to like, you know, ride camels and shit. Well, so they all lived and did stuff. And they're yeah. like, I guess we're going to start building. So the first, the country's first mosque is built at Mari in South Australia in 1861. And the Central Adelaide Mosque. Yeah. Oh, I that is so cool. I had no idea. 1860. I want to go there. Yeah. The first camel which became known as Harry, which I think is really funny. It's just Harry the Camel. Harry arrived camel. at Port Adelaide in 1840 and was used in 1846 expedition by John Herricks. That is wild. Um, at the same time, this may have the the the, yeah. the Hillam the family the Hillam family Australian branch was just being transported there on a prisoner ship. So, oh, really? Yes. The Hillams oh, nice. in Australia were all uh, I think from descended from a thief 
<laughs> yep. Nowhere anyway. Else. Um, this on. may have also had an unintentionally positive cultural and economic effect on Australian society because in a way, this was sort of like the railroads before the railroads oh. because nobody was like crossing these huge swaths of land before this. Right. So the Cameliers opened up lines of supply, transport and communication between isolated settlements, making the economic development of arid Australia possible. It's wild. And suddenly there's this whole network of people that would have never been exposed to each other and they were being like cross-pollinated and on these like weird crazy humped beasts which is really kind of fun just c continue even if i'm laughing oh, this is insane right yeah and I... they carried wool and water and telegraph poles and railway sleepers tea and tobacco <laughs> look at them hard and, working uh, hard working and and the aboriginals of the areas they mm -hmm. started they were like into it they began to incorporate camel hair into their artifacts they were just cool. like these things are awesome so some of them, uh, some of the dudes, like the Cameliers had like, I guess, married some people who were uh, yeah. part of like different Aboriginal tribes. And there's people today who like can trace their roots back to this, uh, which is really interesting. But of course, like every story about technological advance, this fund was oh. only temporary because eventually railroads started to be built by the 1930s. Yeah. And everybody was like, tired camels, wired trains, <laughs> which... Don't put me in that position to choose between camels and trains because that's not fair. Because can't imagine they all have their own merits. They have their own merits. On today, if someone did that, I'd say a camel. I do love a train, but I want to try camel. Yeah, and so everybody was like, "Okay, whatever camels buy," and the camels were like, "Oh shit, okay, I guess I don't even get like a gold watch for like my lifetime of service to this company." Right. And they're like, "Nope, bye." A plaque? And so they anything? just like <laughs> nothing. And so they're just like go away they just like release them into the wild oh. and um there was no like one child policy or anything that implemented <laughs> that was implemented to stop them so there's population just like exploded hence the recent efforts to try and call the population because it got too big so you're telling me if i wanted to kill a camel i could i don't i don't want I, to i'm saying i think at like one point a few years ago they were just like yeah we're gonna go shoot a bunch of camels because there's too many of them like Open camel hunt. hunting was okay by the government but then people rightfully were like, uh, this is barbaric no. and terrible. Can we figure <laughs> right. out a better way? So there's like preserves and, you know, these, um, what are they called? Not preserve. Is preserve the right word? Preserves yeah. the right word. Yeah. Where they yeah. Like keep them all in like one area. Uh -huh. Yeah. <clears throat> so they're trying to figure it out. Again, I'm uh, the story is really interesting I of, of the whole like bringing the camels to Australia. I might at some point go back and like really get into it because I was reading uh -huh. about it and I was like, there's specific characters. There's like specific context for it. And I'm like, I couldn't. There was too much for me to just sort of go through to be able to prepare it for this week. Right. Um, so I might Please, reserve that for another time, it. just heads up. But okay. I thought that was it was really crazy. And it was, it's really interesting to think about uh, these animals just populating a whole different area. And you're like, oh, of course, there's like a perfect analog yeah. for that. So it's it's really cool. That's why. Oh. Um, so I'm going to end on one little story. So after we watched Lawrence Arabia and came home, Sarah was like, we need to watch all the special features because I have all the Blu-rays. I have the Blu-ray of it. And she was like, I want to watch the special features of how they did this because it's crazy because it's all practical. And there was one story that I thought was really funny. Uh, it was really interesting. So in Lawrence of Arabia, there's a lot of like crazy war, like, you know, charging scenes where they're trying to like attack people and all that. And according to Omar Sharif, there was one especially insane day of filming. So um, you don't know this, but at one point they go to take a city of Aqaba and there's this whole cavalry of dudes on like horses and camels all riding at like full speed. It's like a charge. How fast are and camels? Are they pretty fast? I feel like they said they can go up to 40 miles an hour, but they get tired somewhat quickly because they're not oh, meant okay. to be running that fast. Right. So uh, I believe I remember seeing somewhere that it's like they could go at about 20, 25 miles an hour, like at a reasonable pace, like somewhat That's comfortably. That's good. Uh, I'm surprised I could recall that that quickly. But anyway, uh, so there are these dudes all get all these extras. It's, and again, this is Lawrence of Arabia, which you haven't seen. But like there's this movie has a crazy amount of extras. There's a crazy amount of people, crazy amount of horses, crazy amount of camels. It's like this, right. this whole movie is it's literally one of the most big like it's one of the most epic epics of all time. So ooh, I got to watch it. And of course, when you get that many four legged animals running at full speed, you get a crazy amount of like sand and dirt and stuff going up in the right. air. And it starts to look like a cartoon, like when the Tasmanian devil is like running yeah. and like all you see is his like upper body and it's just a puff of clouds where his like legs clouds are. Clouds of smoke or clouds of dust. Yeah. yeah. Sharif is like, oh shit, this is kind of dangerous. If I fall off my camel, no one's going to be able to see me through all the clouds of dust and I'm just going to get trampled to death. And so Ooh. he finds himself a rope 
and he ties it like he ties himself extra tight to the camel because he's just like i'm not taking any risks oh my gosh now, that's also scary though yeah omar sharif does this because he thinks ahead peter o'toole who plays lawrence uh, uh-huh. no i don't know if he's like drunk or was just banging whoever the night before he's just like I yeah whatever i'm just gonna get on the camel combo. let's do it there's some yeah. ego involved of like i'm fine i'm invincible so peter o'toole just is like whatever let's just do this take 56 i don't care let's go <laughs> And he's he's Lawrence, so he's like leading the charge. So he's leading the charge. He's doing his thing, and uh, of course he eats shit in the middle of this take, <laughs> and falls of in the course. middle of this like Lion King sized stampede of like camels and horses. Like there's hundreds and hundreds of them. So scary. And he doesn't get killed. You know why? Why? Because by some miracle, his camel that he was riding, unprompted just goes and just stands over him, like puts, you know, the two feet in the front and two feet on the back. Yeah. And just like, basically is just like, oh shit, like the guy that gives me food might get hurt. So I'm just going to stand here because people can see me above the cloud of smoke, but they're not going to be able to see him. And everybody that was riding behind just sort of like went around. That's a good camel. Listen, camel, lifesaver. That's the whole reason that Peter O'Toole is still, or I mean, he's not alive now, but he was able to go on and have like a Mr. Camel came back like 50 years later and killed him. Yeah. You owe me. (laughs) Now is not your time. Uh, But I thought Uh, that was really crazy. It just protected him. He was just like, oh, okay, cool. I'll stay there. Bro is shit. That's, uh, dude, I want a camel on my side. So wait, how smart are they? Are they pretty smart animals? Like, Uh, I don't know. I don't Mm. actually know. I didn't look that part of it up, to be honest with you, like the levels of intelligence. I don't think they're like a crow or anything in terms of being able to solve complex problems, but they're very loyal. Smart enough to be loyal. Smart enough. Yeah. Wow. I um, love camels. So the next time, all my young listeners, all our young listeners who are of Middle Eastern descent, if someone asks yeah. you if you rode a camel to school, your answer can be, I should be so lucky to yes. be with a beautiful, yes. practical, highly functional animal Loyal. that chooses me. <laughs> yes, that will protect me. As its companion. Me. Oh. Yeah. What would be the, uh, what would be the uh, hey, Chris, did you ride a horse to school because you're European? Yeah. Is that like the same mm. thing? There's, uh, you can't really diss people like that, unfortunately. It doesn't really I work. I know. But I'm still angry at Chris. Anyway. Yes, yes. I would okay. be I would be honored to get to like be a friend with a camel, you know? Yeah. I think, um, and they're funny and dope. And and I spent in the morning weird do- doodling some, some drawing some camels. Can I yeah, see? Yeah, and I was just like- uh, I, I don't have it here. I have to go All grab right. my That's sketchbook. Okay. Sorry, but I will show you. Yes. Okay. But the point is, is, and as I was drawing them, I'm like, you know, they look a lot more structurally when you're drawing them. It reminded yeah. me a lot more of a giraffe than anything because of like the weird oh. creaks and it's got like a longer neck and it's got this like dopey, weird <laughs> body, Where which I love giraffes, by the way, too. Yeah, they're wild looking. So I don't know. It was just kind of fun. And, and you know, of course, the the hump is not water. It's just people always no, think it's it, like, it, like milk or it's, it's filled fat. with water. It's yeah. yeah. No, it's just fat reserves. So I, I don't know. I just thought it was like they're funny and they're like these weirdly beautiful creatures. And they're so highly functional. And like, yeah, it's crazy how much stuff we were able to do just as a result of these things existing and being able to domesticate them. Right. Um, and literally the impact that it had on Australia, I thought was really interesting. And okay, anyway, that, so that story is nuts. I won't read about that just in case you end up going into it. But yeah, I, yeah, I just love that they're like a perfected horse, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, and I'm like, I it's it's pure, just like I, there's a lot of stuff that's racism, but I'm like, it does. This is like particularly dumb racism because this is yeah. a really like a, a functional, like great animal that's like yeah. really interesting and like there's a reason has, like, they're very sh- popular to use in the <laughs> Middle East and North right. Africa. Like, makes perfect sense. Why would you use a horse? Yeah. Oh, you know what? I just remembered. I had queued up some article about them, and they brought some to Joshua Tree. I totally forgot to read that. Really? Place. Anyway, that might be. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I'll go back and read that for the next time. But anyway, that was just my thank you for indulging awesome. me. I just I just realized I wanted to just like indulge a little bit yeah. about some some camel stuff and just be like, you know what? It's okay. Camels are awesome. Yeah. Everybody who's racist can eat shit. It's fine. Uh-huh. doesn't matter. It's just an animal. It's not like a right. culture. It's a thing. <laughs> it's exactly. It's so crazy that like kids will find literally any imagery and, and turn it into an attack on another kid. Like a hundred percent. Oh, just, adults do that too though. But, <laughs> but kids are so vi- vicious about, I mean, so are adults. Never mind. Yeah. But kids are just so like, it's crazy that they can be so young and latch onto something mm-hmm. and turn it into something like you're a little bit different than me, so I'm gonna 
take this animal <laughs> that I saw in a yeah. movie once. <laughs> like, and a- anyway. And kids are also weird because they'll just take that personally, even though I'm like, I should have yeah. just been like, camels don't even have anything to do. But I was like, right. Hmm, what? I'm sorry. No. <laughs> and then it becomes like a weird thing. You just completely like shut out of your life. Fascinating. By the way, last last thing I'll say, which I thought you'd think is funny, is Shotor is, is a camel in Farsi. Mm-hmm. Uh, we refer to ostriches as Shotor Morph, which is literally camel chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, camel chicken. It makes sense. Look at camel up. chicken is. It just looks like a giant camel yeah. and a chicken at a kid. Wow, I love that. Also, by the way, I always love hearing Farsi. Um, I know that's why I threw it in there. Language and in insertions, you know, fascinating. Uh, oh, I was gonna send you a bunch of pictures, and I got so excited about camels that I didn't oh, even yeah. send you any. Um, I'll just send you a couple of some of the old timey ones. Okay, let's see. Oh, this whoa. one's really crazy too. You can see, this is a more contemporary one right here. Look how here. high off the ground they are. Oh, there's a bunch of people underneath that horse. I think those are the like Aboriginal tribes. Those are Aboriginal, people yeah. that are like all part of it. Cool. Oh, look at that. What a weird animal. What isn't it? It's and then like here's a... like an old timey illustration, which I really like. Sorry, what were we gonna say? It's got like a weird little neck pouch. Oh, look at that. I like that illustration. Those are dope. Yeah, me too. It strikes me just how tall they are. Like. How do yeah. you get up onto a camel? Is it like a ladder, like a camel ladder? I think they get down and you sit on them and then they because oh, they have I like a weird right. like they're, psh, the they're giraffe they're legs, legs yeah. <clears throat> they're like giraffe. I, like I said, I honestly I think more of giraffes when I think than I think of horses yeah. when I look at them. They definitely don't resemble horses, but they are. Mm-mm. Wow, look at them! I want to pet one. Me too. Let's open a camel um, zoo uh, with an adjacent alligator it. zoo, and they can. We'll go. Yeah. Fight. They can fight. We can wrestle wrestle camels. <laughs> camel wrestling. We can wrestling. sell hamel, camel uh, eggs. Mark Hamel the camel. camel Mark eggs. Hamel the camel. I like that. <laughs> Wait, if I get, Let's camel, get a camel dude. name in her. That's what I was saying earlier. Yes. Oh, I just made the connection. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Alligator Joe Camel. Is that the episode Alligator title? Alligator Joe Camel. I think that's going to have to be the episode yeah. title as well. Yeah. Alligator Joe Camel. So that's my tab. Thank you for listening. Thank um, you. Now we will move on. I like on the to personal touch to it. I always like Thank you. Uh, yeah, it was fun. Uh, yeah, um, how are we going to so destroy what do you these? Do? We could do. I, I just like this, the a, jaws of an alligator just yeah, snapping. mauling it to death. Yeah. Just <laughs> chewing on a, an alligator just eating a uh, raw chicken. How about that? Sure. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. You want to count down? Everywhere. All right. Let's do it. You ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Close. Close it. All, that alligator sound. All right. Screams. Moving on to listener emails. You're up first. All right. Uh, mine is from Paul from Washington State. And you know Paul. Uh, it's this Paul is, again. This is Paul Paul. Yeah. I Anyway. This is the story. Okay, he says, uh, my wife and I are going through another round of IVF. So we keep making jokes about giving birth to rabbits. The te- This tab is why. This is the story of Mary Toft. Toft was a 25-year-old illiterate servant from Surrey, England. In August 1726, she had a miscarriage, but a month later, she still appeared pregnant. On September 27th, she went into labor and was attended initially by her neighbor, Mary Gill, and then her mother-in-law, Anne Toft. She gave birth to something resembling a liverless cat. I don't know what... Yeah, so they called a doctor to come look at her, and during the night, she delivered more animal parts. Over the next month, (laughs) over the next month, the doctor recorded that she began producing a rabbit's head, the legs of a cat, and in a single day, nine dead baby rabbits. This is an animal-heavy show, huh? Whoa. The doctor sent for the King of England and was like, bro, this is crazy. You got to send some royal docs. And the king did. Then when they arrived, they were greeted with the news that that Mary was in labor with her 15th rabbit. Toft gave birth to several more dead rabbits in their presence. One of the royal physicians thought it could be true and sent the rabbits to the lab for analysis in London. They found corn, hay, and straw in the dung pellets that were still in the rectum of the rabbit, which proved that it could not have developed inside of Mary. She was sequestered, so she would be under constant surveillance, and her sister-in-law was caught sneaking in a dead rabbit. She would get the rabbit, place it inside of herself, and then deliver it when the doctors were present. 
Thank you, Paul. Th- that's it? That's yes. what you leave us with? I've read about this before, and it was just this huge hoax. Like, she was, like, just putting ra- <laughs> just putting dead baby rabbits up there and then pushing them out. <laughs> Speaking of flim flim, flim flim. <laughs> you, you good? Okay. Yeah, I've... Great. <laughs> yeah, congratulations on your 15 dead rabbit babies. Well, what's your email? Thanks, Paul. Uh, okay, thanks, for thanks making Paul. Kave speechless. That's pretty hard to do. <laughs> email number two is <laughs> from Adrian from you are Spain. Not, not into this. <laughs> okay, Adrian from Spain. Adrian from Spain. Hi, Kava and Hannah. I'm a big fan of your podcast. I can't even count the number of times I've gotten dirty looks from my office mates for laughing out loud <laughs> listening to your show. Nice. I love what you guys do, and I'm happy every time you drop an episode. That's, That's really nice. nice. Thank, you. Thank you, Adrian. Anyway, what I wanted to send you is not a tab I had pending to read, but a tab about tabs. Oh. More specifically, a recent article from PC Gamer called, quote, Firefox Power User Keeps 7,400 Plus Browser Tabs Open for Two Years. <laughs> Just so- 7,000. Okay. Obviously, my first thought has been this person should participate in the podcast. Mm -hmm. Uh With so many tabs accumulated, Hazel must have several juicy ones. Well, that's all I wanted to contribute. Thanks for reading me and cheers to you both, Adrian. And so I pulled back a little bit, just like a blurb from the article. It says, Firefox power user Hazel, who prefers not to give her last name, posted a screenshot showing 7,470 tabs open earlier this week after finding the browser initially unable to restore all tabs. (laughs) Hazel was able to bring the tabs back to life via a Firefox profile cache. However, tells PC Mag that reloading the full sessions took no more than a minute. Oh. The future. It might it might be time for us to, uh, you know, go back to Mozilla. I haven't been on Firefox in a long, you long time. You know, I still, but... I'm a still a, a Mozilla user. Are you really? Yeah, I have. It has been my browser from since 2005, I think. Yeah, I used to use it a lot in the aughts, yeah. and at some point I it's, switched it, over. It, it kind of really sucks, I will say. It kind <laughs> of isn't great, but uh, if I'm not on a, if I'm not on Safari, I'm on Mozilla. It's uh, it's my buddy. It's my boy. Well, My Mozilla, boy. if you're looking for if you're looking to sponsor our podcast where we talk they about aren't. having tabs, this is perfect. They're hemorrhaging employees, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's yeah. not that much to advertise on our show. It's barely listen, Just we'll do it for honestly, free. Honestly, give us Just give us an update and put us yeah. Yeah. See <laughs> Anyway, uh if you also have a tab that you'd like to share with us on the yes. show, please go ahead and send us an email. It's five hundred open tabs at gmail.com. That's five zero zero. Additionally, we uh, would love to get voice memos. Voice Try memos. to keep it under a minute. Basically, all we need to know is what your tab was about, something fun that you learned from it, include the link, and of course, where you're from, because we like knowing uh, where yep. our friends are. And uh, you can also follow us on Instagram at 500 Open Tabs. And we also have a Patreon, a Discord, and a Google uh, Map. Um, list? 500 Open Roads. 500 yeah, open I roads. keep struggling to, as to what we're going to call it, but yeah, it's basically like a, a map list thing. Our Patreon, I've been putting up a bunch of bonus clips. There's been some, I put one up recently about uh, us talking about our childhoods, about like how we got into art, some funny behind the scenes stuff, alternate beginnings of the podcast before we inevitably start over. And uh, we also have a YouTube. If you want to watch this and see all the pictures, our YouTube All the is... pictures and the fun different outfits that Hannah and I tend to yeah. wear when we're doing a themed episode. We've been doing costumes lately. I like that. It's it's just seeped in. It seems like a fun way to it, keep this yeah. podcast interesting. Um, uh, additionally, it's so I'm boring otherwise. <laughs> Without an outfit change, there's no point. Um, <laughs> additionally, you have a book coming out, right? Oh, sort yeah. Of, my still? book, Cat People. Yeah, it's still coming out. Uh, I have some dates. Uh, I'll be in Portland on the 26th of October at um, oh. doing a signing, and I, I'll have more info about that soon. I'll probably be in L.A. Uh, the days after that. Sorry, uh, I'm busy that day. What? You better <laughs> not be. <laughs> if you are, I'll uh, And then uh, at some point in New York, I don't really know yet. Um, but if you are in the San Francisco Bay Area on October 8th at uh, the Ferry Building, there's a bookstore up there that I don't remember the name of that I will be doing my opening day signing. So, All right. Uh, October. And you can Look out for it now the dates. and get a tote bag. So tote bags. Do it. Order it. Order Hannah's book. On uh, my Instagram. I also have books. 
He has a bunch of books, and I think you should. I've order also his got a first. bunch of books. I mean, they'll, they'll get, get there, there faster because yeah. your book's not going to be released. So, in the meantime, while you're killing time waiting for Hannah's real book to arrive, you can you buy my shitty books. books. Yeah, um, the ones he yes, spent can... years on. They're great. Uh, blacksmithfilms.com. dot mm-hmm. Go check it out. Um, that's where you can buy everything. Um, I believe that is all for this week. Is there anything else you want to discuss before we close it out? Nope. No, you just want to dance. I guess. So you can just dance. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Please tell a friend. If you know any camels, send them this Please. episode. If you know any alligators, send mm-hmm. this in the send them an episode. Send them this episode. I can talk words. Are good. Sure. Thankfully, we're at the end of the episode, so my in all bad seriousness, word though, phrasing. sharing yeah. with friends is the the best way to spread this, and that's what we're trying to do right now because we're in the yes. growth stage. Send it to your friends. Send it to anybody that you know that's ever been a victim of camel based racism. Maybe yes. This will- embolden them to go research camels like I did. Yes. Well, thank anyway, you. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Hannah, for indulging me this week. Oh, uh, yeah. We... Every week, dude. I'm all I'm here for anything. <laughs> tell me anything. Very well. Uh, the one thing I will tell you right now is to keep it Josie. Keep it Josie, everybody, and have a good time. <laughs> have a good